Atop this large bluff, at this scenic overlook, we view the vista of Red Wing's vast neighborhoods and peer into the current vitality of downtown Red Wing. However, on the other side of this view, we gaze at Red Wing's past, the deceased members of our community who toiled to assure Red Wing's current vibrance. Welcome again to Oakwood Cemetery. Last time, we trekked through Red Wing's humble beginnings to uncover Oakwood Cemetery's formation and rich history. As one of the most historic cemeteries in Goodhue County, this green bluff has stories to tell. So today, let's peek behind the tombstones and haunt our way through Oakwood's special monuments and landmarks. This is part two of Oakwood Cemetery. Arriving up the hill, you will first find two large commemorative monuments. Placed by members of the Red Wing Fire Department on September 3rd, 1900, the Firemen's Monument honors local firemen who died in service. The main inscription reads, Erected to their honor dead by the Red Wing Fire Department. Directly right of this monument lies another one in remembrance of the Spanish-American War veterans. Many of the veterans' individual stones lie next to the monument, each with a veteran marker. Down the road lies two Civil War generals. Brigadier General James Sanks Brisbane was born in Bullsburg, Pennsylvania on May 23, 1837. General Brisbane enlisted in the Union Army in 1861, serving a number of posts and positions. He perished on January 14, 1892. Brigadier General Lucius Frederick Hubbard's tombstone is found not far from General Brisbane's. When he was 21 years old, Hubbard moved to Red Wing, where he became the publisher of the Red Wing Republican newspaper. In the Civil War, he served in the 5th Minnesota Infantry and was appointed Brigadier General in 1864. Hubbard served as the 10th governor of Minnesota from January 10, 1882 until January 5, 1887. He died in Minneapolis on February 5, 1913 and is proudly buried at Oakwood next to his wife. One more Civil War soldier to highlight is Abraham E. Welch who reached the rank of 1st Lieutenant of the 1st Minnesota Infantry and died during the war on February 1st, 1864. Some graves throughout the cemetery's rolling lawns bear a small plaque indicating the deceased as a Daughter of the American Revolution. These markers are placed by an organization known as Daughters of the American Revolution dedicated to continuing the legacy of women who are direct descendants of soldiers and patriots who served in the Revolutionary War. Scattered across the cemetery are some unique sewer pipe graves, molded by Red Wing pottery and Clay City workers. At one time, 12 could be found at Oakwood. The large Youngdahl family stone pays tribute to the brave World War I captain Oscar Youngdahl, born on March 2, 1888, and dying on October 8, 1918. The inscription of the stone reads as follows. On October 6, 1918, near Saint-Étienne-Aux-Arms, France, Captain Oscar Youngdahl's company was exposed to deadly machine gun fire from the flank. Failing to dislodge the enemy, Captain Youngdahl, with a rifle, went forth to accomplish the task. He killed one gunner and captured four others, but was mortally wounded, the objection having been gained by his company. He collapsed, dying two days later. On many previous occasions, he had shown himself one of the most courageous officers of the regiment. One final important landmark is the Elks Lodge Memorial Point Monument, found in Oakwood's northeastern corner. Members of Red Wing's Elks Lodge No. 845 erected the 10-foot-tall granite slab in 1952, dedicated to their departed brothers. 
the city of Red Wing is lucky to have Oakwood Cemetery within its limits. The amazing monuments we discuss today reveal how Oakwood is filled to the brim, full of historical wonder. Next time, we'll take an inside look at the Betcher Memorial Chapel and the Bloodgate Memorial Entrance. Thanks for watching.